Of course, if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In part A of this question, we are told that the object's original velocity is 6 meters per second. So we can say v naught is equal to positive 6 meters per second. And we are asked to calculate its displacement during the time interval. So displacement is typically symbolized by delta x. And that's what we're looking for. We know that it has a constant acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. So we can say a is equal to positive 4 meters per second squared. And then the final velocity is 12 meters per second. So we can say v equals 12 meters per second. We've pasted the three main equations of kinematics over here on the right hand side. We want to make sure that we pick an equation that involves the four variables that we've listed here. Notice that time is not part of them. So the equation that makes the most sense to use, the one without time, would be this one. We can copy that equation down and then we'll simply fill in the known values. Some people like to fill in the values and then solve for the unknown. Others like to solve for the unknown and then fill in the, the values. In our case, we'll simply plug in and then solve. So for v, like we said, we have 12 meters per second squared equals 6 squared plus 2 times 4 times the delta x value. We can square both sides, 144, and then this one's 36. 4 times 2, of course, is 8. We will then subtract 36 from both sides of this equation. So we'll get 108 equals 8 delta x. And then finally, divide both sides of the equation by 8, and we get 13.5 meters is equal to delta x. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. We go up to part B, which says, what is the distance it travels during this interval? Well, we calculated the displacement as 13.5 meters. So you can imagine that as starting at a point, And because it was positive displacement, it was simply moving along a straight line until it reached its final destination here, and that displacement was 13.5 meters. You'll notice that because the object traveled in a straight positive direction, that the distance will also be 13.5 meters. The only way the distance would have been different is if the particle took some sort of convoluted path in order to reach its final destination, something like that. But of course it didn't, it just traveled in a straight line. So the answer to part B is that the distance will also equal 13.5 meters. Next on to part C, it says if the original velocity was negative 6 meters per second, what now is the displacement? So in part C, we're basically going to be borrowing all of these values, but we're going to make one variation to them. Because the initial velocity is now negative 6 meters per second, we have to make sure that we plug a negative sign in right there. So we will now go ahead and use the same equation that we used before. And we'll plug in the known values. So we'll have 12 and the initial was now negative 6 plus 2 times 4 times delta x. Basically, when you work this out, you're going to end up with the same value for delta x, because when you square the negative 6, it became positive 36. So once again, delta x would equal 13.5 meters. So this is the correct answer to part C. Now on to part D, which is perhaps the trickiest part of the question. It wants the total distance that it travels during part C. So we're going to draw a picture in order to help us understand what's happening in part C, so that can help us answer the question for part D. So remember in part C, the initial velocity was negative 6 meters per second. So we have this particle, and initially it's actually moving in this direction. We know it's moving to the left because the initial velocity was negative 6 meters per second. We also know that the final velocity from part C was positive 12 meters per second. 
And so what's happening is this particle initially is traveling to the left with negative velocity. It's going to slow down and eventually stop. Then it's going to need to turn around and move back until it reaches a positive final velocity of 12 meters per second. So what we're going to have to do is figure out how far it traveled this way along that journey and then we're going to have to find out how far it traveled this way along that journey and then add them together. Now it's important to understand that when it reaches this point it momentarily stops. So the final velocity right here is going to be 0 meters per second. So let's focus our attention on the green path for now. Let's rewrite our known values. The initial is negative 6 meters per second. Again, the final is 0 meters per second. The acceleration was a constant, I believe it was 4 meters per second squared, yes. And what we're going to do is calculate the delta x there. Same equation as before. We'll plug in 0 squared equals negative 6 squared plus 2 times 4 times delta x. 0 squared is 0, negative 6 squared is 36, 2 times 4 is 8. Let's subtract the 36 from both sides, so it cancels out on the right. And then let's divide negative 36 by 8, and we get a displacement of negative 4.5 meters. Notice the displacement is negative. This should make sense in light of our diagram. If we go back up to the green path, the object was traveling overall in a leftward direction. And so this displacement should be negative, and indeed it was. Now for the blue path. Notice for the blue path, we're now going to say the initial velocity is 0 meters per second, because remember, it momentarily stopped at this point right here. So it stopped, its initial velocity is zero, then it's going to speed up and reach 12 meters per second. So for the blue path, let's list out everything we know. Initial is zero, final is 12, acceleration is still four, we're going to calculate delta x. Same equation, we'll plug in the final squared equals the initial squared plus two times four times delta x. We get 144. 0 squared is just 0, so of course that cancels out. We get 8 delta x. Divide both sides of the equation by 8, and you're going to get 18 meters is the displacement. Notice that's positive displacement. That, again, should make sense, because along the blue path, the object was overall moving to the right. So that displacement is positive 18 meters. Now, the total distance. It's important to understand this. You don't simply add these two values together because distance is always a positive quantity. So in other words, along the green path, even though the displacement was negative 4.5 meters, the distance along the green path is positive 4.5 meters. And of course, the distance along the blue path, it was already positive, so that remains positive 18 meters. The total distance, d total, is simply the sum of these two. So you just add them together and you get 22.5 meters. That is the final distance in part D.